Here we go, John. Top three things that I see uh, that need work in your skiing. But before I get to the top three things, I do want to commend you right here on the gay glide. I want you to take note of this position here. Your shoulders are facing down the 246 buoy line in the glide. And for the most part, your stance or your weight is directly over your front foot. And that's exactly what we want to see. I know that because the water's breaking right here, um, just in front of your front toe. So this is pretty much a picture perfect stance. Now, I want you to remember this position because the biggest um, deficiency I see in your skiing is that once you get in the course and you get under load where the boat starts to see you, and when I mean see, that means that the boat starts to feel you pulling, as soon as you get into that mode where you're trying to accelerate towards the wakes, you start to squat. See this right here. And this is most everybody's problem. Uh, so don't feel like you're alone. But <clears throat> you see right here the position that you're in, it's kind of that chair position. And this is the number one problem for you because it gets you back. Now what I mean by that is I'll show you in this offside cut out of one. And this is both sides that you need to work on it. But you can see right here that this position puts the ski tip high and this is a steep attack angle i call it and when we have that steep attack angle the water basically just sees a wall and so you're creating a lot of drag in this position the fix for this is to be tall stand tall away from the top of the ski so in other words if you can get your shoulders taller away from the ski so instead of here if you can get your shoulders up here that is probably the quickest and simplest way to get your mass over your front foot or to get your support um, through your front foot. So both sides trying to come out of the buoy and simply stay tall or allow yourself to stand over your front foot and allow the ski to be more underneath you. So in other words, instead of the ski being here, our goal is to have the ski here underneath you. And to do that, we need to have our body the knee is in a good position, but instead of the femur being back here and having your butt draggy, your hips draggy, we need to have your hips here and then to have your shoulders here and then to have your head right there. And you can see how if you do that, then the ski is going to be much more trimmed out because your weight's going to be much more through your front foot. And that, my friend, is how we get efficient acceleration with less line load. It's all about using this load through the rope to create drive towards the wakes, all right? And that's how we do it, by the stance on our ski. I talk about position and being able to use your body position to create power. And we'll show, I'll show you again here. This is a little bit better out of two, but you still see how your, your butt is dragging and that creates a low efficiency, kind of high drag situation. It just kind of permeates throughout. Now this is a little bit better. You can see your ski tips down, but you're doing it by kind of craning your shoulders forward here. And we don't want that. We want your body in alignment because you're the most skeletally aligned and stacked and strong when your body's in alignment. So that's the first thing, stance on the acceleration cuts. Now, the best place to practice this is the pull out for the gates. So right here, you see this first move and I'll, I'll probably... I'll say that your arms, you might want to lay your arms out because having your arms in and close to your body creates a torque that pushes your ski towards the boat. I know it's hard, you know, you may get it, but some people don't, don't quite get that and we don't need to get into the details, but just the reality is as soon as your arms are trying to, to be in or your lats are engaged and you try to make this first move, often that gets people on their heels and you can see how right here, your weight's just a little bit back and your butt's dragging just a little bit too much. So one thing you might wanna try is keeping your arms a little bit longer or an extension of the rope here so you can stand over your front foot. The goal is to have the ski a little further from the boat when you make this first move out to the left. But either way, this is a great place to practice that offside cutting acceleration. And again, the problem is not where your knee or your ankle flexion is, that's great, but Instead of your hips being there, we want you to stand taller with the hips here. And then that ensures that your shoulders are here. And that'll get that ski tip a little bit flatter to the water. And it'll get you much more efficient on this acceleration cut. And this is the best place to practice it without the buoys because there's no anxiety at all. All right. So that's number one. Number two, 
One of the things that will clean up, and we, we may not need to address this as much once you, you uh, address the inbound or the acceleration phase, but on the outbound phase, see how your shoulders get pulled towards the boat. On oftentimes into 135, into your offside turn, the shoulders get pulled into the boat. And what I'd like to see is from center line outbound, more lead arm tension, more tension in this arm than the trailing arm on the way outbound. And I'd actually like to see you try to, from the wakes, from here, from this point right here, out to the second whitewater, I'd like to try to see you rotate your shoulders away from the boat, okay? And almost wrap yourself up in that lead arm right here. Be wrapping yourself up in that lead arm. Because when you do that, what it'll allow you to do is that will basically, by wrapping into that lead arm, that's going to bring this inside shoulder forward, okay? It's going to bring the inside shoulder forward and the inside hip forward over the ski. And it will allow the ski to actually flatten out more here instead of being tip high. And that's especially important right here during the first part of this phase because see what happens is the water is breaking at your front heel and that creates um, inefficiencies, creates drag. And because of the way the, the ski is on the inside roll angle, it takes you straight to the buoy and you see the rope go, go sag right there. As soon as the rope goes droopy, you know that you've lost outbound direction. Okay. And the whole goal through this phase right here, the whole goal is to be skiing that high line. And what I mean by that is from the point right here back at the course or back at the, um, back at the edge change where you have a moment to wrap yourself up in that lead arm, you would be skiing higher and coming back. Obviously you're not going to be on the shore, but you kind of get the point instead of this more direct line at the buoy and then having to deal with a direction change and ended up further down course. Okay. And all of that stems from being able to land on that new edge with the ski flatter and the shovel more engaged. Okay. But because you're back, you can see you're already trying to make that turn um, because you, you're anxious about not being able to make it and getting loose line. You're skiing into the rope. So this all starts with a lead arm, an effort to create lead arm tension through this transition phase. So you should be feeling that lead arm on the way outbound, wrapping yourself up in it. And that should help you if you hang on with two hands until you get to the new edge, that should help you land more over your front foot and stand tall over your front foot into this pre-turn. All right, that's number two. Number three, we want to stand when well, I just said it. We want to use that lead arm tension to stand more over our front foot. Because if we do that, we do all the good things that I just mentioned, where you ride this higher line outbound and back in instead of riding this lower line straight at the ball with a loose line. And we see this into both sides, okay? This isn't just um, your, your offside. And here, actually, you start, you come off the handle just a little bit soon, all right? We like to see you hang on to the handle with both hands until you get to kind of a, a, um, a static roll angle. In other words, until you find this new um, roll angle that you're going to maintain into apex, into the pre-turn, into the buoy, okay? But as you see, you have already let, let go. And this is what a lot of people do. You're not alone in this respect. A lot of people start to feel right here. They start to feel the boat pull on them, right? They start to feel the boat pull on this outside arm. You're like, no, I don't want to give in. I don't want to let that shoulder roll into the boat. So in an effort to keep going outbound, we let go with that outside hand right there. Do you see that? But as soon as you do that, you just lost the ability to move over that front foot and watch the ski pushes out in front of you right here and the line starts to go droopy right there. And it's all a result of not being able to maintain tension in that lead arm until you set the new edge, okay? So number three, effort. First one is stance on the acceleration phase. The second one is more lead arm tension in both sides on from center line out, okay? From this point here, outbound to where you set the new edge. And then the third thing is using that to be able to land more and stand up more over your front foot into this pre-turn. 
And I will say, it, you're going to feel rushed. If you hang on a little longer with two hands into the buoy, instead of letting go here, right? If you hang on till here, you're much closer to the, to the buoy. So from the time you, you let go with that outside hand until the completion of the turn here is going to be quicker. So you're, you're going to have to get this uh, sensation in your head that it's going to feel more rushed from the time you come off the handle until you come back to the handle. But that increased or that upgraded tempo, increased tempo, when you release the handle and come back to the handle is going to make all the difference in the world if you can approach the buoy with more support or more weight over your front foot and the ski more underneath you instead of out in front of you like this. The goal is to have that ski more underneath you here and have your body more over it there. All right. Those three things I think can make a big difference. Um, hopefully that makes sense. And uh, yeah, man, I can't wait to see the progress in the coming weeks and months. Um, overall, this is great skiing for this early in the season, but I think you can do better. Um, I know you can do a lot better. And I think it starts with your stance on the acceleration phase. Remember, the acceleration phase starts when you get two hands on the handle here all the way until this first trough and it's progressive acceleration phase, all right? But we wanna optimize it, we wanna maximize that zone because that is everything. Position, body position, how you stand on the ski through that acceleration zone creates the tempo for the rest of the course. All right, John, thanks, man. Looking forward to seeing your progress.